In a video that we previously posted last year in July of 2022, we discussed how Japan is currently suffering from the issue of teenage homelessness, mainly centered in the nation's capital city of Tokyo. These runaway adolescents in Tokyo are largely known as Tohoku kids, mainly as they all gather around the Tohoku Square, located inside the nation's biggest red light district of Kabukicho. And now that almost a year has passed since we first discussed this dire issue of teenage homelessness in Tokyo, we have to ask the subsequent question. Has the situation in Japan gotten better for these runaway homeless teenagers over the past year, or has it gotten worse? Sadly, the answer is that the problem has gotten tragically worse since then, to the point that this no longer is only an issue in the nation's capital city of Tokyo, but has become a nationwide issue. To elaborate, while the gathering of runaway homeless teenagers in a certain area of the city was initially considered as a problem only in the city of Tokyo, as of the time of making this video in May of 2023, the phenomenon has now effectively spread to other cities in Japan, such as Osaka, Yokohama, Nagoya, and Fukuoka. All of these Japanese cities now have also developed a certain spot in the city, such as the Toyoko Square in Tokyo, where these homeless teenagers all gathered together to conduct their livelihoods. But then again, how did this happen? And why is the issue of runaway homeless teenagers so resilient in the case of Japan? If you are to watch any news in Japan that deals with the issue of teenage homelessness in the nation, you can always notice that the authorities in Japan always proudly report on the fact that they have done everything that they can to clean the streets up from the homeless teenagers, such as sending 120 police officers to Kabukicho in December of 2022 to get rid of all of the homeless teenagers who were staying around the area. The reasons as to why the government authorities in Japan specifically did this in the month of December are obvious. In the land of Japan, where the surface level cleanliness and aesthetics of the matter are prioritized more than anything else, it was imperative for the authorities and law enforcement of Japan to have these unpleasant, homeless teenagers out of sight from the ordinary civilians and tourists in the Shinjuku area, especially in the year-end time of the year where people were celebrating the joyous occasion of Christmas and New Year's Eve. We all know that this is absolutely not how you're supposed to deal with the issue of teenage homelessness as sending 120 police officers, intimidate these adolescents and force them to return back home does not do anything in terms of fixing the underlying fundamental issue as to why these young people decided to leave their homes in the first place. But then, this is not how the Japanese psychology works. In the minds of the Japanese authorities, the teenagers on the streets of Kabukicho are the equivalent of trash that are thrown on the streets. And how do we eradicate the trash on the streets? We simply pick them up and throw them into the trash bag. And this is exactly the same type of stance in which the Japanese authorities take when dealing with the issue of homeless teenagers that are out on the streets of Japan. Pick them up and in their case, send them back home. But once again, teenagers are not some soulless, inanimate objects such as an empty can of soda. While a trash that has been thrown in a trash bag will stay in that trash bag, the same obviously does not apply to the teenagers, who are human beings whose basic rights as a human being are more often than not blatantly transgressed by their own parents, thus their dire desperation to get out of their homes as fast as possible. So, as we can obviously imagine, although the streets around Tohoku Square were temporarily cleared of homeless teenagers in December of 2022, as of now in May of 2023, they are fully back on the streets of Kabukicho, still out in the usual areas around the Toho Cinema and the Tohoku Square as they always have been for the past few years. And every time I make a claim of how prominent abuse in the domestic realms within Japanese households is the reason why the runaway teenage issue is so much more widely prevalent and most of all so resilient in the case of Japan compared to other nations, there is always that one person who makes a comment in the lines of, hey, there are juvenile delinquents in every country, and a lot of these teenagers run away just because they think it's cool and fashionable to do so. But once they hear the story of Moka, a 15-year-old Toyoku kid who is still out homeless in the streets of Kabukicho to this very day, they will come to change their mind. 
Mocha says that she has been out in the streets of Kabukicho since she was 10 years old, and that it has been two years since she last went back home. She also said that throughout all the years in which she had run away from home and has been out in the streets, her parents did not contact her even once throughout this time. This has also been the case when she was admitted to a psychiatric hospital for five months. As she was and still is a minor when she was admitted to the psychiatric hospital, her parents were notified by the hospital authorities of her state of hospitalization. And Mocha says that while they did come by to the hospital to see her, they just quote unquote pretended to care about her in front of the hospital staff to save their face. And once they were done with their acting, they left her in the hospital once again never to be seen again. But then what is even more sad is that Mocha says that she even prefers to be left alone and untouched from her parents as she is now, as the abuse that she suffered from her father back home was incomparably worse than the pain in which she faces currently living in the streets. And the unfathomable frequency and prevalence of the exact similar type of abuse in which Mocha suffered from her father is quite frankly the reason why Japan will never be able to fix the nation's runaway homeless teenager issue. Mocha says that she was taken advantage of physically by her father throughout her time at home. Once again, she was merely 10 years old when she left home. And to be honest, I'm just so sick and tired of this side of Japan and I'm so frustrated at the nation's lack of urgency to desperately fix this perverted side of the nation. Of course, on the surface level of things, they are trying to fix it to some degree, mainly because of increasing international scrutiny and what the nation considers the most important, to save face. So when the news of a father who has been physically taking advantage of a daughter surfaces in wide media in Japan, then the Japanese prosecutors all act as if they have suddenly heard such news for the first time, act as if they are the most morally upright saints in the world and keepers of justice, and the judges subsequently give the father somewhat of a lenient sentencing. But the fact of the matter is, all of this is only when the young minor daughter musters unfathomable amount of courage to report their very own father's conduct to the police. But let us all be most brutally honest. How many mere little 10 year olds who are still so young and innocent, and most of all, still rely so much of their daily survival to their parents, will be able to walk down to the police station and report on their fathers? I can guarantee you that in 99 cases out of 100, 10 year old girls who are physically taken advantage of by their own fathers or any other predatory adult we will not have the courage to report to the police out of extreme fear and worry as in the exact case of Mocha. And as in the exact case of Mocha's father, unless the case has been made official, absolutely nothing is done to these worse than animal beings such as Mocha's father. So in undate number of these middle and old age Japanese men who prey upon young children, more often than not their very own children, still live happily and unpunished in Japan, not understanding what they have done is heinous and wrong. And the evidence is just everywhere. If you can read Japanese, then there are numerous anonymous interviews of Toyoko kids who confess their reasons for running away from home. And in the case of most female runaway teenagers, it all ultimately usually comes down to this. Or if you have lived in Japan for long enough, such as how I have, and had the chance to become close friends and had drinks or long talks with some friends, they more often than not confess how they are scared of men because of their experiences when they were young. Or if you have not read the articles on Toyoko Kids, nor had the chance to live in Japan for a long time and do not have many Japanese friends, you can still intuitively sense that something is very wrong with the side of Japan through many indirect lenses, such as how over 25% of Japanese dads say that they still take bath with their daughters until the age of 10, and 7% of Japanese dads still insist on taking bath with their daughters even when they are over the age of 20. Of course, some people will still try to defend this and say that the culture is different in Japan and how it is about relaxing and bonding with your daughter, etc, etc. <sighs> But come on guys, let's just put all our love for Japan aside, admit when something's good about the nation when it's good, but also at the same time, have the audacity and most of all, 
as good human beings with any sense of moral integrity, just acknowledge that when something is just off, weird, and perverted about the nation, admit that it is off, weird, and perverted, and help them acknowledge it and try to fix the problem without making any excuses for them. And this wide prevalence of objectification and predatory attitude towards female minors in Japan, whether it be the insanely in undate amounts of cringe anime in which the Japanese people make that makes other Japanese men fantasize even more about the minors, or even worse, as in the case of Mocha and other numerous female Toyoko kids carried out in real life, is absolutely and undeniably wrong and perverted. And it is time for the world, and most of all, the people within Japan themselves, to admit that the way in which so many of the men in the country look at the minor aged females transgresses basic human rights and decency and actively work upon to incessantly ingrain upon these adult males in Japan that their status quo perception and attitude towards the minors is egregiously wrong. What they're doing now is not the answer and that is turning a blind eye to the extensive number of these perverted, mentally not right beings such as Mocha's father, as well as the fathers of many other female runway homeless teenagers in Japan, only for the judge to begrudgingly give these predatory beings with rather lenient criminal sentencings, only after when one out of hundred young victims, whose ages are often in the single digits range, brings up inhumane levels of courage to report the conduct of these adults to the police. And of course, this does not only apply to the parents, but also to other predatory adults who attempt to lure these runaway homeless teenagers into conducting activities such as papakatsu, which is the Japanese term for compensated dating. And only when the entire nation actively works upon changing their fundamental perception on minors to the right direction for multiple years and decades will the number of runaway homeless teenagers permanently be reduced for good in Japan. Do not send 120 police officers to intimidate these young teenagers to return back home only for them to once again receive indescribable treatments from their parents which made them desperately leave their homes in the first place. And thankfully, there is currently a line of hope in Japan. And this line of hope is the existence of individuals within the nation such as Haori Okada who expresses similar opinion and solutions as to the one in which I've provided, in how rather than providing temporary countermeasures, the authorities in Japan have to focus on not having these young teenagers be forced to be sent back home only to be reabused by their parents, and how it is absolutely essential to take a much, much stronger stance when it comes to cracking down on adults who engage or attempt to engage in indecent acts with these minors. But exactly when the voices of individuals, such as Haori Okada, will become the mainstream voice in Japan against dark forces in the nation who obviously want the things in the country to remain as status quo for their own twisted interests, we can never know for sure.